Good morning, Storm fans. I hope you're excited. I know that I am. Today is the Legacy Showcase, and we are playing the Epic Storm Postmodern Horizons 2. I actually recorded a video Friday night that will probably be live before this one, um, so check that one out. And in that video, I ran two copies of Strike It Rich alongside Main Deck Rite of Flame. And in that video, I talk about how the format's a little bit faster right now. Uh, Blue Red Delver's the top dog, and on top of that, it's a lot of non-blue at the moment other than Delver. Control uh, maybe will make a resurgence, I'm not sure, but the format feels really fast. When the format is fast, cards like uh, Mistress Bobble don't make a lot of sense. We were trying four copies of Strike It Rich and found that we were just always a turn behind. So Rite of Flame is back because it allows us to be a, a tiny bit faster. And with that, we found a little bit of results. So this main deck should look pretty stock to you. This has been the main deck we've been running the last year or so. Um, you know, three Verdant, two Meyer, even with no copies of Carpet of Flowers in the board. And with no copies of Carpet of, the carpet of Flowers, there we go, in the sideboard, uh, we do have some new green cards. So in the video I recorded on Friday, I ran one copy of AV Progenitor Ooze. And it was decent. We didn't get to cast it, but it was decent. And then since then, Alex McKinley and I have been playing a lot of matches trying to prepare for today. AV continually overperformed. So one of the nice things about AV is you can hand your opponent a wish claw and there's a very, very high probability there's no answer to AV. Um, so we've been siding in AV over ad nauseum against really, really fast decks. And the results have been good. Um, yeah. So AV is continued to overperform. So at the moment, we're boarding out a Tendrils and an Ad Nauseum versus Delver for two copies of AV, and we've been winning. So that's the plan. Um, you can't fluster storm sure, AV, which is really nice too. Just throwing that out there. Uh, and people are getting got by Wishclaw Talisman. Like if this resolves against the blue deck, it's scary because that AV is really difficult for people to answer. Uh, Engineer Explosives for zero does not do it. Uh, because all the tokens have a CMC of 5. And then uh, one thing that we found was that Galvanic Relay, initially we were like, this card's so good, and then we played it for a night and it underperformed. Since then, Galvanic Relay has been meeting our expectations. It's been solid. Um, that said, I found myself burning wishing less and less for Thoughtseize against Control Decks and getting Galvanic Relay instead. Uh, just as like a mini Minds Desire, and I've liked it. Uh, so because of that, we felt like we had two cards for the same purpose. We cut the Thoughtseize. And with cutting Thoughtseize, you have to wonder, um, how am I boarding against non-blue decks now? Because you have six cards that need to go out. You have four copies of Veil Summer and two Defense Grid. So these six cards have to go out. If you cut the Thoughtseize, you have two Chains, two Abrupt Decay, and then one. Um... We thought about it for a little bit and we decided we were going to add in a third copy of Chain of Vapor. This helps answer uh, Collector Oof, Eidolon, all those permanent cards that people play against us uh, that aren't Chalice of the Void on one. Uh, Chain of Vapor swiftly takes care of. I don't know if three chains the right number, to be honest. It could be three chain, one Void Snare. That said, I'm not a big fan of Void Snare. I know you can Burning Wish for it. But uh, in general, it feels a little lackluster a lot of the time that you play it, where Chain of Vapor has additional purposes, uh, creating Storm Count and things like that. Um, that said, one copy of Void Snare isn't the craziest thing, but it's better in theory than it is in practice, trust me. I've played a lot of Void Snare in my life. Um, yeah. It could also just be like an Echoing Truth to give you a little bit of versatility. That said, Echoing Truth... It does set you a turn back sometimes against the Collector Roof decks because you're short one mana. Just keep that in mind. Like, this third slot doesn't need to be a chain. I think chain is the best one, but you're welcome to disagree with me. Moving on. Uh, and then we have Massacre. Massacre, you know, Death and Taxes has been seeing a lot of play uh, due to Esper Sentinel. And because of that, Massacre just seems like a no-brainer. Why lose game one when we have an answer that we can tutor for that just crushes them? Uh, that's the main deck, and if you're seeing this video, that means I did at least reasonably well today, so congratulations to future me. I hope I kicked so much butt, and if you enjoyed me kicking so much butt, make sure to subscribe, like, and comment, support the Combo Cabal, be a good Storm Chaser, 
all that good stuff. And while you're at it, you can always submit a donation deck. And uh, yeah, we have three wonderful tiers for you to choose from. You can submit your TXT file at theupstream.com slash donation decks. You can also support us by going directly to theepicstorm.com slash shop and picking up, you know, great, great The Epic Storm merchandise. Do yourself a favor while supporting us. It's a win-win. That's my spiel. That's the intro. I hope to see you in round number one. Let's crush today, and I'm hoping to cast tons of AV progenitor oozes. I'm sure we'll do well. See you there. Round number one, let's go! We're facing Boot and Ha, and we are on the play. Alright, so Boot and Ha, I would expect to be playing Blue Red Delver. Uh, the question is, is this hand good enough against Blue Red Delver? Like, it's pretty slow. The double defense grid is a little concerning. I just don't know if this hand is reasonably good enough. I think I'm going to ship it. I mean, I'm going to keep it begrudgingly, but... I wish we could have had a hand somewhere in the middle between these two. Like, if one of the defense grids in the other hand was a land, that was a snap keep. Alright, and our opponent's also mulligan. We're going to keep and bottom this tendrils. Tendrils is just not going to be a live card, and we'd rather hit our fourth land drop. Boon has also kept six, and now we're beginning. Alright. So we don't get to draw a card. We're just going to play Delta and pass. Okay, and now it's the opponent's turn. They're going to draw, and we'll get to see what they're actually on. I'm guessing Blue-Red Delver. Ancient Tomb is not Delver. Oh, no. Well, I guess I'm glad that I shipped that first hand. They're likely on the new Affinity deck. So we're looking for Lion's Eye Diamond off the top. I think I'm going to fetch just a Fin. Not a land, but might be a little too slow. Lion's Eye Diamond off the top next turn would still be really good for us. Pretty scared of uh, the new Affinity deck. At least post-board. Uh, there's two versions right now. One of them plays main deck Aethersworn Canonist. The other uh, just plays like Prison Effects post board and then Fluster Storm. I'm really afraid of the version with Canonist. Alright. Ooh, they're passing. So we could Echo here. I think I'm just going to play Claw and Pass instead. I feel like it's a little risky to Echo. We're so unlikely to die here, and uh, our opponent isn't doing a whole lot. So now they can create a construct using Urza Saga. And if for some reason our opponent's playing a version with Force of Will, which might be why they haven't done anything, we could, uh, in, in theory, Veil of Summer back up. Oh no. Oh no, they are that version. I look like a fool. <sighs> Come on, Burning Wish. And I could have echoed last turn. God damn it. I don't even have two mountains for Burning Wish. Okay. Um, hmm. I don't know what to do here. Because if I give them Claw, they can activate Claw and then sacrifice a Dravenger. I guess that's my out, though. So my out here is that they don't use it, and then I go get Lion's Eye Diamond next turn with Wish Claw. Okay, so this is going to be tough. Sorry, I probably wasn't narrating that very well, um, and the new compressing algorithm needs me to narrate in order to see stuff. I was just so concerned with the other swearing canvas, so... Our opponent gets their third chapter on Urza Saga right now. Hmm. 
Okay, so I just looked up the deck list. Uh, this deck won the challenge yesterday, and I just looked it up. There's no Fluster Storms in the board, but they do have four copies of Thorn of Amethyst, Disenchant, and Surgical in the board, and a Singleton Graft Digger's Gauge. So no Fluster. Uh, post board, we're looking to be bringing in Chain of Vapors and Abrupt Decays. So what they can do here as well is activate the Claw and sacrifice a Dravenger with this floating mana from Urza Saga. Urza Saga's triggered ability is still on the stack. And the triggered ability is now resolving. I think we're dead. Because they can put double the number of counters on the construct. Yeah, we're just dead. They could also just sacrifice artifacts to uh, Candace, which is something I didn't even think of. So, getting Grape Shot here was a mistake. Uh, walking Blusta into Asper Sentinel. Okay. And now the Swing for Lethal. Yeah, we're just so far dead. Alright, so we go to four. They can just sack Ravenger to Ballista and kill us. And looks like that's what they're going to be doing. Alright, another sacrifice there of Mox Opal. I don't know what our opponent thinks that we could have. They should just kill us already. Yep. So the Walking Bliss is going to get the uh, the counters from Arkbound Ravenger, and then they're going to shoot us for lethal. Okay, so we're going to lose game number one. Cyborg time. Okay, so I mentioned we want these chains and the decays. Once again, we want to get rid of these grids and the veils. The question is, do we want to keep the Veil of Summer in the deck, or do, would we rather board something else in? Um, I don't have strong opinions. Could board in the Grape Shot. And then have Pulverizes or out to Cannonist. I don't hate that. This gives us a little bit of flexibility in Surgical as well, because our opponent's boarding in Surgicals. Let's try it. And if you want to support this content, you can pick up a mini token pack from the epicstorm.com slash shop. For $12, you get 54 storm tokens. It's pretty good value. You get 20 storm, 10 black, 10 red, 5 blue, 3 of the rest. 6 of each goblin token on the back, 54 overall, because they're double-sided. Woot woot. And they're mini. They're half the size of a standard Magic the Gathering card. Once again, you can get those at the epicstorm.com slash shop. Okay, game number two, and we are on the play against Affinity. Alright, so with this hand, we are a single mana short of a turn two ad nauseum. We're going to keep this, and uh, sort of just hope for the best. We also have an Abrupt Decay for uh, Ether Sworn Canonist or Sphere. Um, yeah, just really looking to draw mana on our next turn. Our opponent has decided to keep seven. Let's begin. Catacombs in a petal. Pray you don't have anything and that we draw mana. Opponent draws. Okay. So Esperner Sentinel into Mox Opal. I don't care about Serpent. Let's draw mana. Come on. Mana. Mm. Unfortunately, we're going to have to pass here. So this is a window where our opponent could have uh, numerous permanent hate spells that we don't want to see. I don't know if I've seen this card before. That said, I know how to read. This is pretty cool. I'll take two here. That's fine. We're still looking to just draw mana. 
Okay, deck, come on. Mana. Wrong kind of mana. Um, Kurt's good. Oh, I forgot about this. So now I'm going to give them a free draw unless I fetch. Not really what I wanted to be doing here. That was a mistake. I don't even know what I'm doing. <sighs> because now, if I want to Chain of Vapor the Germ or I take an extra 6 damage, I just, I'm misplaying a bunch here. Because, like, the 6 damage is probably going to shut off Ad Nauseam anyway, so maybe I should have just echoed there. That's fine. I don't think that this is lethal. So they're swinging for 11. And they can shoot me for 2. Okay, I'm just like trying to think what my options are. Alright, really funny deck. Um, I also wonder if there's like some sort of like uh, wish claw line for lethal here. I don't think there is though. So, just talking out loud. I could go Dark Ritual, Wish Claw, Talisman, Activate Claw... Go get Lotus, or not Lotus Petal, uh, Mox Opal. And then tap Opal, float a mana off this, Chain of Vapor, bounce Opal, bounce these. So I'd have one mana floating, replay Opal. Um, I think that leaves me one short of recasting the Tendrils. Because I would have the, the, this two mana and then the opal. So that's not good enough. So I think I just have to echo. Alright, so Dark Ritual Resolves. Play Claw. Hmm. Make sure there's no line. So let's say I go get Dark Ritual with Claw instead. Um, I think it still leaves me one short. Because I would activate... this. The Mana Floating gets Ritual. Burn a Cataclysm, cast Dark Ritual. I have to sacrifice the Petal to cast Chain. And then I don't have a fourth Mana for Tendrils. Yeah. I just have to go get Echo here. <coughs> Excuse me. Wish Claw Talisman is on the stack. Alright, deck, please be good to me. Echo! Uh, I don't think this is going to be good enough. I just don't think I can get up to 16 Storm. So, we can ponder here, but I just don't think it's realistic. Alright, so that's a pretty easy shuffle. Okay. So we have fallen to Affinity in round number one. Our opponent didn't even interact with us this game. Our deck kind of just didn't cooperate. So unfortunately, we're going to start this showcase 0-1. and one. Maybe I misplayed game one. That's very likely and probably. Um, maybe I should have expected the Canonist version instead of the blue version. Um, yeah, so we're 0-1. I'll see you in round number two. Welcome to round number two. We are facing the legend, Arkin, and we are on the play. Okay, uh, this seems fine. We'll try this out. I do know that Arkin is playing Jeskai Stoneblade today. Arkin is streaming the challenge, and unfortunately that is a side effect of streaming. Okay, so I just played a Polluted Delta and passed. Arkin's turn, Flooded Strand and pass. Draw. Veil Summer's a good pickup. We're just going to pass after playing our Blood Same Mire. We're looking to brainstorm on Arkin's End Step. Most likely, what we're going to do is play Pluted or you activate Pluted Delta for Underground Sea, cast Brainstorm, and then with this Blood Same Mire, go get Taiga so that way we have all of our colors. It looks like Arkin is going to play Stoneforge Mystic here. Mm -hmm. Most likely, getting Caldera complete. Batter Skull, okay. Hmm. Lots of land. So we're going to fetch for Taiga, get rid of those Opals. Looks like we're going to start playing a little bit of a longer game here. Ding! That was a good one. 
Uh, is there anything we want to do with this burning lash? This would be a spot where, um, what is it called? Thought seas would be decent, but it's not the end of the world. Get, rid of, get out of here, Stoneforge. So I think our next turn we're actually going to pass and try to add Nauseam on Arkin's turn. Make it seem like it doesn't matter. Snapcaster bringing the beats. I guess it's technically better to try to do this now. Wasteland is still on the stack. Okay, so Wasteland still on the stack. We're gonna cast Dark Ritual and then Ad Nauseum. Veil of Summer is already resolved. And now Ad Nauseum. So we do have to stop and consider dying at six because if we flip Tendrils, uh, this would kill us. And actually, I'm going to stop here because uh, Arkin could dash the monkey as well. And dash monkey would put us to three. So if we flip tendrils, that would actually be lethal. Alright, so Arkin attacked with a Snapcaster Mage, and now we're in the second main phase. Feeling pretty good about our odds for our next turn. Let's go! And Arkin's had enough. So we've taken game number one. All right, Stoneblade. I don't know what art is in Arkin's board. I didn't look at the deck list. But Abrupt Decay seems pretty good against these decks. I don't mind taking out Rite of Flame. Question is, what else do we want to board? AV is a card we could sideboard in. Uh, that said, I'm a little bit nervous about Batter Skull versus AV. I don't know if that's really a situation where we want to be. So instead of boarding out Bright, what if we board out one of each Mox? Do I like that more? Yeah, I think I do. Especially against the Silver Control deck. These Mox are probably a little bit less important. Once again, you can go to theepicsrum.com slash donation decks to submit your donation deck. See it here on this very channel. It's a great way of supporting us while showcasing your combo strategy. All right, game number two, Arkin is on the play. We're on the draw. Okay, and uh, we've opened up a really good hand. We're definitely going to keep this. We're just one mana short on turn one of going all in. There's the land we wanted. So Arkin is representing some sort of a one mana interaction at the moment. And I'm just going to pass. No need to force it here. All right, so Ragavan's going to get in there, create a treasure, and exile the top card of our deck. Volcanic Island. Arkin, unfortunately, played a Scalding turn pre-combat, so Arkin cannot play the Volcanic Island this turn. So Arkin's going to have four cards in hand, plus a Batter Skull. We're going to attempt a Brainstorm here. And it looks like one of Arkin's four cards is a Pyroblast. Okay. So Arkin has four cards. We know three of them are unknowns. One is Batter Skull. All right, so that is resolved. If we had sided in AV, this would be a spot where AV would be bananas. Um, deciding how I want to handle this. They're at 18. I think we actually just might have a lethal storm kill. Uh, so Burning Wish would be Storm 8. Tendrils would be Storm 9. They're at 18. That does it. Uh, black and red. And we get the tendies. Woot woot! Just like that, we are now one and one, bouncing back. Unfortunately, we face fellow Legacy Master Arkin. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in round number three. Hopefully, we can continue our climb back up the mountain. Welcome to round number three. We're on the draw against Fuzz65. Their goldfish history has a lot of blue-white land still, as well as ad nauseum tendrils in the straight blue-black pier to the abyss deck. I don't know what they're playing today, 
But we're going to keep this in and hopefully it goes well. All right, beginning of Fuzz's turn. Verdant. Okay, so it's probably not land still. Looking like it's possibly the pier deck. Uh, the last list does not have any force of will in the main deck. So maybe we could echo here. I'm not sure. I mean, we can echo. I'm just not sure if that's the play I want to take. Uh, so we could imprint Ponder and then cast um, Ponder itself as an option. My fear with uh, going for the echo line is that we'll have removed two Burning Wishes from the game. So we only have six business spells. But maybe that's just best. We could also um, try to set up a Galvanic Relay for next turn. And by doing that, I would go Chromox and print Ponder, Ponder, look for a red source, write a flame, Burning Wish, uh, and then Lion's Eye Diamond. And that would be for like six or seven. Uh, but we'd have to win off of just two initial mana sources. Our opponent's deck does have a bunch of discard in it, as well as Pact and Negation. Um, I think I'm just going to uh, echo. And the reason I'm echoing is that, uh, at least with the seven cards, I get to keep them in case they're bad. I don't just end up Hellbent. Um, so I think the most valuable card here is probably the Dark Ritual. So we can hide that on top. All right, play out the Mox Opal and pass. That could have been a little bit better. And I hid the Burning Wish down, so that way we have a backdoor into our own Pier into the Abyss. Imagine they're going to take a Veil here, but I could be wrong. Okay. Discard City. So we're able to play Double Claw here. I don't know if that's going to be enough for us to win. We have to be able to untap. All right, so Fuzz's main phase. In the back of my mind, the deck list has four copies of Pact and Negation. So if you go all in, they could Pact and then upkeep Dark Ritual pay if they play another blue source here. Ponder from Fuzz. Looks like we're dead. Is this just Ant? It looks like it could just be Ant. What? Did they really just pass? I don't know what just happened. Uh, okay. Maybe they were just going all in because they thought that they were dead. So just in case they are on the pack deck, I'm going to play out the land. Um... This can get Trop. Okay. Alright, and our Ad Nauseam Resolves. I'm going to reveal some cards here. We do have uh, the Echo still on our main deck, so that's a card we have to be conscious of. And it's pretty good Ad Nauseam so far. Volcanic, and Fuzz has conceded the game. I don't know if this is Ant or not yet. That said, I don't think we sideboard regardless. Uh, I think we're actually just hitting Submit again. So that's what we'll do. Our deck was already perfect. And in the meantime, while we wait for on to begin, why don't you go open up that description down below, join all of our social media networks, keep up to date on the Epic Storm, and all the other wonderful combo decks here on this very channel. Uh, I highly recommend the Discord. It's a great community with people that are willing to help you get better at combo decks. Make sure to go check that out. Okay, so we are back. Uh, for game number two on the Dragon's Fuzz. We've opened up a hand of seven mana sources. We're going to ship this. Fuzz is also mulliganed. Fuzz has gone to five. We're going to keep this and bottom the tendies. You could bottom the Ad Nauseam so that way it's still in your deck. Uh, so it can't be discarded. So you've a you have access to it. And then you can get it with Claw. The problem with that is that Tendrils is just a dead card. So you're essentially keeping a mulligan to five. And I don't really want to do that. Fuzz has gone to four cards in hand. Ponder, okay. So that's a good sign for us because that means that we can keep up Veil of Summer to protect this ad nauseum. Um, I mean, Ritual was good. And I like these. 
So this allows me to veil through days if for some reason they have days in their deck. Main phase brainstorm. They might be going for the kill here. It's looking like it. Okay, they're passing. So we're actually going to have Ad Nauseam with uh, Veil back up in case they have a Fluster. Activate this Bloodstained Mire. We're going to cast Dark Ritual. And then Nas. Do you have it? Nope. Alright, well we revealed the worst card in our deck. I think I'm supposed to just pass here. The Tendrils kills us. Yep, I'm just going to pass. Keep up Veil. Probably don't need two copies of Burning Mesh. I, I think I want the extra lands, but I'm not sure. Alright, we'll do this. Alright, so it's Ant. It's not the Pure Deck. This gets around Fluster if I cast it right now, so we're supposed to. If they have a way of beating Veil, we're kind of in trouble. Looks like they're just going for a value play and passing. Okay, so this is our shot. We have to get up to Storm 10 in order to beat the Fluster. We do have the Echo in the Graveyard that we should not forget about. Okay, so... We have four mana. Grape Shot's on our board. I feel like I maybe just missed a kill somehow. Maybe not, because I have to get the green for the fluster they revealed. Hmm. I just want to think through this. I'm sorry if I'm taking a long time. Okay, so I think here's the line. I'm just going to talk through it. We go right of flame, right of flame. Wish Claw, Imprint Ponder. Go get LED. Yeah, I think this does it. So they played Petal, they discarded Forest, Verdant, Swamp. So this is their hand? Yeah, this is a clean kill. We have exactly enough mana. I guess they could try to brainstorm in a veil. That's their out. And they just gave us Lethal Storm to... Um... Oh, no, they didn't. We're still one short. Burning Wish Grape Shot's only nine. And they've conceded. All right, so we've successfully defeated Ad Nauseam Tendrils, and we are now 2-1. and one. Welcome to round number four. We're facing Matt Yo 804 and they have a long history of playing lands. Uh, how do I feel about this hand against lands? Well, a wasteland is going to stop us uh, pretty early on from ever even casting this on turn two. Veil of Summer and Tendrils are already mulligan, so this is a five-card hand at the moment. I think we should just ship it. Uh, this is reasonable. Let's go. Yes, please. Um, so I'm supposed to draw, assuming that they're on lands, I'm supposed to draw the Chrome Mox because that allows me to cast Talisman on turn two through a Wasteland. Uh, looks like they're on death and taxes. Um, we could echo. They kept seven. I think I'm supposed to just echo. Hope for the best. It's kind of stinky, but I think it's the best thing we can do here. Unfortunately, we have to pass. That said, we do have Burning Wisher Massacre now. Uh, maybe I'm supposed to play Opal. All right, so we're in our opponent's main phase. They're doing some thinking here. Um, they do have an active Wish Claw, so they could go get like a Wasteland. Normally, there's nothing like uh, Deafening Silence in the main deck. They could just go land Thalia, which is not what we really want to see, but it's also a possibility. Okay, so no Thalia. That's good news. We're looking to draw into mana here. Diamond. Red Flame's not bad. Uh, so what can we do? We're definitely going for it. So I can just do the free stuff. The stuff that doesn't matter. And then we can make decisions from there. 
All right, so seven mana. We can peer. All right, so I'm feeling pretty good about this now. Casting our Lion's Eye Diamonds and then our Petals. We've got this one. We just have to play enough stuff. Storm 11, Dark Ritual, Dark Ritual, Tendrils. And that's going to do it for game number one. Just resolve these real quickly. And boom! The Hail Mary Diminishing Returns effect Echo got there. So we did add in the extra Chain of Vapor into the board for this matchup. Like, that thought sees that we swapped the chain was specifically for decks like Death and Taxes. So we have three chains, two Abrupt Decay. So we have five cards we want to keep. The question is, what do you board in aside from that? In my opinion, is you board in Grape Shot. It's the six piece of removal. Uh, and when we're playing Massacre, you don't have to leave Grape Shot in the board. Uh, because this is our haymaker against that deck. So main deck Grape Shot kills Thalia, all that good stuff. Uh, plays around surgical a little bit if they have that. So we're going to submit this, and hopefully it's good enough for us to get another game. If you're unfamiliar, I'm a part of the Eternal Glory podcast. And in that podcast, we talk about legacy. We're available on all major podcast platforms. It's myself, Brent Cook, alongside Brian Koval and Phil Gallagher. You're going to love it. Go check it out. Okay, game number two, we're on the draw. Our opponent's mulligan to six. Uh, this hand is just a little too clunky. I think we're going to ship it. Um, this is weird. The Tendrils, once again, is a mulligan. We have Abrupt Decay for a possible answer to something. It's just like, this hand doesn't do a whole lot. I'm going to ship and go to five. This is the best hand we've seen. I'm keeping this. Um, get rid of... Oh, no. I think I want the Burning Wish. I think this is an Echo hand. This is a very reasonable five cards. So unfortunately, we mulligan twice. Another chain. So chain's awkward if they have Thalia to back it up. Because uh, then they can just vial it back in, which is sort of an issue. So is this. Um, sure. So we can echo on our turn. Once again, the chain's looking good here. All right. Petal. So we could empty here, I think. Yeah, we could empty for like eight. I don't know if that's good enough, unfortunately. So it's empty for eight or echo. There's no chain of vapor trick to do here. Hmm. We could relay, but I don't know how much I love that. I think the play's just casting Echo. Hope for the best. That wasn't bad. So we're looking to ponder into Burning Wish. I think I'm going to go all in. We call this the Landon Swartz. I call it for short, the Schwartz. Uh, Landon's a terrific guy. And uh, this is the play he loves making. The Hail Mary. So we're going to add Black Blue here and just hope for the best. That's not it. Game three. Four looks is a pretty reasonable thing to do. I think that actually gave us our best odds of winning uh, this game because passing is pretty brutal. Unfortunately, we just didn't hit. So we'll be going into game three now. Still fairly exciting. Um, I'm not going to make any adjustments. I'm just going to resubmit. Having all those chains is pretty nice. I'll say that. Can't keep that. Ugh. Why is Tendrils the action spell? I don't think I'm supposed to keep this. We're on five. This is brutal. Maybe I'll get lucky and ponder into Ad Nauseam. Wow. Kind of. Well, I, I'm speechless. <laughs> Called shot. No! Ugh. Brutal. We just lost. I think there was a cantrip on top. Ugh, it's backbreaking. Ugh, come on, deck. That was just... It's not even the deck fault. Like, 
we had everything go right. It's just we're not going to beat this start. And I'm just going to concede here, unfortunately. <sighs> what a way to lose a round. We're now 2-2. Two and two. Stick around. We'll try to win out. Welcome to round number five. We're facing Anurag Das, and we are on the play. Well, Anurag is known to play control decks. I will keep the double veil of summer hand. Anurag quickly mulligans to six. Anurag is testing the new uh, white card. It's X and a white. Uh, exile target non-land permanent with converted mana cost of X or less, or maybe it's just X. Uh, prismatic something. I could probably look it up. Prismatic ending. While well, Anurag's mulliganing, we can look at it. Okay, so it's equal to X, not X or less. Uh, so this is the card. We do have to consider this with some of our permanents. Whoops. All right. Anurag plays Island Ponder. Shuffles and passes. We're going to draw, and Burning Witch is a good pickup. I like to see that. We're just going to pass, though. Right now, next turn, I'm going to cast Burning Witch. I'm sort of undecided on whether or not I want to get Relay or just go get Echo. Because we don't have a lot of gas for Relay at the moment. So that sort of changes it a little bit. Relay would be for four, maybe even more than that. I could also just go get Echo. But Anurag is someone that tends to play Hold Breacher, so I'm sort of leaning towards Relay. Anurag told me nice. So Anurag is a fan of the Galvanic Relay. I'm guessing this is Ice Fang Quaddle here, and it is. So Anurag is going to draw, untap, and let's see what Anurag does during his main phase. Alright. No land yet. Forest. Uro. I don't care about Uro. Uro triggers, probably, like, the best thing Anurag can put into play is, like, a Wasteland, but I don't think Anurag's deck plays Wasteland, so Karakas, and then attack with Ice Fang. Yep, Flooded Strand. Okay, Rite of Flame's a good draw. Relay for five. It's not bad. Mox Opal, Petal, Grid, Chrome. So Ponder was our only action spell out of that. Okay, so Anurag untapped. Hasn't played a land yet. Hasn't done anything else. Relay looked decent right there. We still have to find a, an actual tutor off this ponder, but we're in good shape. Anurag's casting a ponder here, probably looking for more interaction. Chose the shuffle off ponder. Likely naming spell here. Brainstorm, okay, that's a pretty good one. I don't know, attacks with Ice Fang Colado and plays a Tundra. Yep, Tundra. So this is our relay turn. Start off on the pedal. Hmm. Wondering if like the Chrome Box would be better to imprint this Dark Ritual or not. I think I'm just gonna cast this. I'm looking to start an argument over the defense grid, if possible. And it all just resolves. Come on, action spell. Tendies is good. Anurag is at 22. We only have 5 storm. Um, hmm. So Veil would be from 6. Brainstorm would be from 7. Storm Chromox would be from 8. Tendrils would be from 9. Still two storm short. Um, this is a really difficult decision. Seven, eight. So one thing I could do is double veil, but I so I think that still leaves me short. So I would go um, veil veil off these lands. Chromox, so that's plus three is eight. Brainstorm is nine. Tendrils would be ten. That's still um, two life short. I think I'm just going to draw the Brainstorm here. Now the question is, do we cast the Brainstorm? Um, hmm. 
Or do we just fetch, look to find three action spells? Or an action spell off the brainstorm? Because we're one storm short at the moment. So if I cast the brainstorm... Yeah, I'm just going to fetch. Come on, deck. Be good to me. Nope. Um, and I'm not going to imprint. I'm just going to pass. A little bit unfortunate. Uh, we can try to bully Anurag with, like, double veil. Like, if Anurag plays land number six, we veil. Anurag forces, we veil again. We clear the brainstorm and then cast this brainstorm. Anurag casting their brainstorm now. Prismatic uh, ending could hit defense grid. That's a card in Anurag's deck. And uh, update, we have hit the city's blessing, which is pretty important. You know, 10 permanents in play, it's just a beautiful milestone. Okay. Flooded Strand. Plays Trop. Yep. Can't do a whole lot. Honorak's just giving us the win if we could do anything, but, but unfortunately we can't. Oh, uh, I guess he could. Okay. I think I'm actually going to pass here and draw the third veil next turn and, and cast the brainstorm fresh. So my plan is to... Uh, I'm willing to let Anurag, <clears throat> sorry, draw more cards here with the attack from Murrow and the draw step. Because I want to create a fight with triple veil to draw cards and then cast the brainstorm, giving me the maximum number of looks. Post combat. What are we looking at here? No, oh, that's brutal. Okay. I don't know what he's thinking. Force of Negation, we're going to cast Veil of Summer. Force of Will, we will Veil of Summer again. Alright, so Ponder. We need a number of things to go right here. Echo's decent. Let's find that diamond now. So there's no blue source to get with this. Ding! Okay. I see you, duck. Um... Unra could have a card I don't want to name out loud right now. But I guess if Anurag had it, it would have resolved before the Veil of Summers. Anurag is playing Endurance, so this could be a spot where Anurag uh, casts Endurance to shuffle in the Rite of Flame. And that's what we're seeing here. So Rite of Flame is only going to make two instead of three. Dark Ritual. Diamond. And uh, we're going to spin that wheel. Let's go. Let's see it. Ugh. Anurag has lethal, so this brainstorm needs to hit. Re uh, Galvanic Relay will not do. Uh, we can cast Veil of Summer to dig deeper. Brainstorm? E. That's what I want to see. Alright, so we're just casting spells now. To end Anurag's career. I'm just talking trash. Anurag's a good friend. And we get the tendies. Chicken tendies doing work. <sighs> Boom. Alright. So we took game number one over Anurag Das. Probably want these decays. And I think we might actually... I don't know if Anurag's list is playing... Terminus. AV seems really good against him, I won't lie. Is it wrong of me to look up Anurag's list on Twitter? I don't think so. Sorry, Anurag. I know you're probably going to watch this later. Anurag would look up my list in a heartbeat, so I don't feel too bad. Uh, it was on Reddit. I do know that. Alright, here we go. Anurag Das. Two Terminus. Hole Breacher, Cannonist, whoops, what if I just did that and like boarded out some artifacts, like this, just like try to AV Anurag, this ad nauseum is like very very sketchy, um, it's worth pointing out, 
I think Honorag's going to board out Terminus, I think. Hoping to get him with the AVs. What turn was that in game one? Turn seven. That's a long game. We'll try this out. We're on the draw for game number two, and we did not mulligan. Honorag has mulliganed once again, both games going to six. Honorag does have a Canonist, uh, which concerns me a little bit, which is why we have the Abrupt Decays. Honorag has three copies of Carpet, so it's likely that those came in, but I think it's just worth casting the Ponder. No protection here. We're going to ship it. Another land. Grid is fine. Hoping that Anurag lets it resolve due to having Prismatic Ending in hand, and then we can just flash in this Echo. Come on, let it resolve. What's the worst that's going to happen? Just let it resolve, Anurag. Come on. You totally have Prismatic Ending. A. We're pretty unlikely to win, so I think I'm actually going to float a blue with this Echo. Okay. We're not actually that far off of casting AV next turn. Uh, Opal does it. Alright. I really want to kill Anurag with an AV. So Anurag, in case you missed it, played a Tundra and Ice Fang this turn. We have a Chromox on top of our deck. AV is looming! Looming, I say. And uh, I can't wait to try to cast it. Alright. Alright. Dark Rit. Play this grid. No spells for you, Anzi. Alright, so now we play Chromox. And Honorag, I think, is going to have to blind flip Terminus here in order to get the job done. I don't think it's worth imprinting. The mana is not a choke point. And I'm going to talk trash to Honorag in chat. Uh, so hopefully he likes this. A little bit of trash talk between friends. You gotta love it. Uh, is it good enough, Honorog? I want to see you concede. Brainstorm's not going to do it against Eevee. With the grid in play. <laughs> Honorog says, good games, YouTube. Good games. Alright, so we are advancing to 3-2 and two over our good friend Honorog Doss. And uh, stick around. I'm sure more fun rounds will happen. Uh, see you then. Okay, round number six, we're facing Punishing Waterfalls. Uh, in testing, we actually ran into them uh, recently, and they were on Eldrazi Post. This is a reasonable hand. I don't think that this is a hand that we can afford to ship. Likely going Brainstorm into Petal, looking to hit Burning Wish for Empty. Assuming they are on um, a Chalice deck again. Brainstorm, and we missed. Sort of unfortunate. Um, what we're going to do is, in case they're not on a, uh, a prison deck, we're going to play out grid here. All right, so they're probably not a blue deck. That said, we didn't hit any action anyway. Reanimator? Ugh. Really? Okay, so Gristlebrand's in play. We're probably just dead this turn. I guess we could always like raw draw Echo or Burning Wish off the top, but it's pretty unlikely. We that also assumes that we do get to untap. And they're on the children's children list, so that's not the case. We're gonna die here. They're gonna draw their entire deck and then play Tundras of Agony, and unfortunately, uh, that'll be the end of us. All right, our opponent is continuing to cast spells here. Do they have the tendrils yet? Come on. Let's go. And there it is. Okay, let's go to game number two. We're looking to get rid of these defense grids and board in a few copies of Chain of Vapor. I still think I like Veil more than Chain in the matchup, so we're going to keep that as is. Um, so just swapping grids with uh, Chains. Unfortunately, we didn't hit there. But even if we did hit Burning Wish, uh, Empty wouldn't have been enough, which was my primary plan at that point. Wasn't expecting our opponent to be on black red. So, shocks. Sometimes you lose. Um, yeah, hopefully we can just get game number two. 
As always, if you want to support this content, you can go to theepicsworm.com slash shop. Okay. Game 2, we're on the play against Black Red Reanimator. What can we do? Um, this hand is like a turn 2 echo. On 7, I think that we can probably do better. This is the second time today where we've opened up Tendrils where if it was a real action spell, we probably win. Opponent's taking a mulligan. We're like 34% to hit on turn two. I'm just gonna keep it. I don't like this, but I don't know how often we're gonna turn one on a mold to five anyway. Opponent's going to five. Like We just have to rip a card in order for this to be good. And if they kept a hand with, like, Unmask or something, it's not going to be effective against us. I didn't even look to see if they played a Chancellor. That's probably bad on my part. All right, looting. Come on, Doc. Give me Burning Wish. All right, we want Wishclaw off this. Burning Wish will take, but we want Wishclaw. Hell yeah. I was a little bit lazy about that. I probably should have gotten, like, Swamp or something to keep my options open for post ad nauseum and now we're going to cast ad nauseum and see what we can reveal just running through really quickly the tendrils is exiled so we have to use burning wish to go get that one but our opponent's just going to concede and uh we'll be off to game number three so that was a turn two win with ad nauseum into the sideboard tendrils Sweet. Now we're on the draw for game three. I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to hit submit, and uh, hopefully we get there. But being on the Dragon's Reanimator is not a winning strategy, at least in my experience. Okay. Game three on the draw. Our opponent's mulligan to six. This is a turn one echo. Um, I'm just going to keep it going to five to four to three oh, I was hoping they just concede I mean they're going to take our pedal here this actually might end up being a game I could lose to a mulligan to three please don't let me lose to a mulligan to three <laughs> all right thought sees you're supposed to take pedal here I guess they could take claw all right, what's it going to be? They're still deciding. So the important thing to remember is that we're going to have a couple turns. Uh, even with their best draws, they have no way of getting Gristlebrand to the graveyard and then uh, reanimating it with two cards back to back. Um, I guess they could go end step, honor, end step, and tomb on tap reanimate, but that's pretty unlikely. And I'm just going to pass. No need to cast the ponder. We're looking for another artifact for Opal here. There's one. Um, I think that's the right play. It's a tough call. So I just want to think this through. Let's say I take Swamp right now. Cast Burning Wish for Peer. So it's four mana, five, six. We could Peer next turn. All right, no Tomb. I like that. All right, so, ooh, they took the pier. Next turn, we have a land. I mean, I'm just going to pass. I'm trying to be a little conservative here because I don't want to allow them back into the game. So next turn is a turn that I might consider casting Echo. I just want to make sure that we can maybe flash it back and not, like, fizzle and lose okay I'm just really nervous right now probably not casting echo this turn um, we are like giving them a small chance to beat us by passing uh, it's worth mentioning we we stashed the ritual on top for this very reason now they're back to one card, which isn't good enough. Um, I'm just going to pass. We know that we have a right on top. It's just free mana. 
I know that I'm being a little conservative here. Blue, blue. We'll float a black. And this should probably do it. Um, get Badlands. Whoops. Undo. And we did not lose to the Mulligan to three. So, uh, that's always nice. And our opponent's going to concede. We'll go, we're going to advance to four and two with two rounds left to go. Let's see if we can finish strong, maybe, you know, top 16 or something. Uh, with our breakers, that's not very likely to happen. So, we're, at best, we're looking at top 32 uh, in a realistic manner. But hopefully you're enjoying this so far. See you then. Round number seven, round the dragons from Medvedev. I've actually faced them recently, and they were on death and taxes. They're normally a blue-red Delver player, though, so I'm not going to put them on taxes. I'm going to keep this. We also have a Miracle Brainstorm if we need it, if they're on D&T. Hopefully it doesn't come to that. Yeah, they're on Delver. This is what I would assume that they're playing. This is their go-to. All right, Mishra's Bobble, Surveil with the Dragon Rage Channeler. Using the bobble and then attacking. Oh no, it's turn one. They can't attack. Whoops. That's not how magic works. Petal's a good draw. Could have played our artifacts, but I think we might be going for a storm kill this game. Maybe that's just wrong of me. Okay, so we passed. We're in their upkeep or draw. I mean, whatever. Words are difficult. Sort of regretting not playing the artifacts after running into days. No wasteland. Gut shot for storm slash uh, surveil one. Mostly for storm though. So they have three of the four types at the moment. Okay, so now they're going to get in. They're at 17. I think I'm just going to hold tight. I think that this is a game where we could end up winning via just Natural Storm. Force of Will is a good one. Alright. Still no uh, Delirium, so we're only taking four from this attack. They have three cards in hand. I don't know if I should just pass here. I'm trying to have as many cards as possible to create that just like beautiful natural storm. I'm just gonna cast it. Force me, come on. So that wasn't very good. Um, so I could put back these two. Play out our artifacts. Tendrils for not enough. Is that how that works? No, technically I could do it. I could cast everything. But I would need them to interact. I think we're going for it. Please, please interact. So, this is going to just buy us time. I'll be honest, I also thought that was for 8. I didn't realize that it was for 7. <sighs> Alright, so it's going to buy us a few turns. We just have to draw through it. I, I don't know. If they forced the Veil, they were dead. Like, obviously, in hindsight, it looks bad. So if they had Chain Lightning Bolt here, we were dead. That's a way of speeding up. So they still have Force and one unknown. So if we had drawn Petal, we still wouldn't have had enough on our turn. Um, so, so we're dead on our next draw. That said, oh, it's in their upkeep. So that, that, that was like a scry. Okay. And that gives them Delirium. They just have to find a blue card for this and we're dead. They chose to not shuffle. So I imagine that we're dead here. Even if we draw Burning Wish or Claw. All right, we lost to Blue Red Delver. Okay, so we're going to do the same plan that we've been doing, which is siding in 80 over these. 
Hopefully that plan is good enough. And if you want to support this content, you go to theepicstorm.com slash shop. Alright, game two, we're on the play against Delver. Seems fine. Alright, Vernon Catacombs passes her first turn. We're looking for Lion's Eye Diamond is probably our best draw. Okay, Delver Secrets. It's not bad, but it's not going to be good enough. I think I'm just going to pass here. Maybe a Brainstorm on their end step. Yikes, Force of Will was re revealed to the Delver of Secrets. We are in trouble. Delver is going to attack. I might just take a draw step here. See what they do. So, no, I'm going to go for it. So they have Pyroblast. Yep. Punish for playing around Wasteland. Really, really want to draw a diamond. There we go. Okay. So, if we wanted to, we could relay. Is relaying better? Um, we're cracking here in case you draw like a right of flame or something. I feel like relay might be better. Oh wow! So they had turned. Well, that's unbelievable. They had double force. That's magic. Sometimes, unfortunately, uh, you don't win all the time. So that brings us down to four and three with one round left to go. All right, the final round of the day. We're facing Super Cow, and we're on the play. Their last deck in their Goldfish history was Death and Taxes. And then before that was Hogak, so I'm not going to keep uh, slow hands. Uh, I don't think I can afford to keep this one either. It's just too slow. Our opponent's contemplating a mulligan right now. I don't know if I've opened up Tendrils this much in a very long time. Like, it seems like every hand I draw, uh, there's a Tendrils in it today. We're going to mulligan again. Let's go to four. Sure. So the plan is to uh, just draw Dark Ritual, I guess. I don't know. Maybe they'll Wasteland us and do us a favor, give us more outs. Opponent kept seven. I'm not really sure what they're waiting on right now. All right, so... We're just going to go Volcanic Pass. Alright, the opponent draws. What are they on? Chrome Mox. Are they have Moon Stompy? They are. Okay, so it took them three minutes to cast a Trinisphere. Congratulations. And we drew the Dark Ritual we needed, uh, but the Trinisphere is just going to be too good. Okay, so the opponent's drawing. We're probably going to concede fairly shortly. Sure. Alright. Alright, so we want these chains, we want the Decays, we don't want Grid. And leaving one Veil isn't the worst because it does allow you to beat Chal Zero, so I'm going to leave in one Veil of Summer. It's essentially just like another copy of Chain of Vapor, but green. Game number two, and we are on the play. This hand isn't a hand that beats Dragon Stompy, unfortunately. Part of me thinks I'm supposed to mulligan this. 
Like, this hand just doesn't do anything is the issue. Throwing to five. We're going to begrudgingly keep this. Our opponent's also gone to five. We're likely not going to win with this hand. But our six, like, despite being able to cast Bush Claw Talisman, it's never going to interact meaningfully with our opponent's strategy. So you just can't... Because you can cast spells doesn't mean it's necessarily a keep. You need to align well with what they're doing. Our opponents put a Ley Line of the Void into play. Trying to shut us off the Echo Lines. We're looking to probably draw like a Lotus Petal or a Lion's Eye Diamond on our turn. And then brainstorm into another cantrip. Oh, that shut that off. Nice five card hand. And I'm just going to pick him up. Alright, so we finished the day four and four, unfortunately. Uh, probably not good enough for prizes. AV was really good. Um, I think we still need to figure some things out, though, with the deck list. Let me know what you thought. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, despite the uh, very medium record. Cheers. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.